the data prioritization meeting or the emails that went back and forth, but this was an incredible amount of work and time. The lesson we learned from that was don't stifle passion, but know when to set boundaries. It was roughly May, June that we started to say, okay, there's been a lot of meetings. We really want to focus and synthesize and make sure that things are measurable, they're clear to our community, and they have actionable next steps so we can start moving forward. Implementation planning. There's a lot of opportunities and barriers that are associated with implementation of the CHIP, and I think that this is really what we want to talk about today. Uh, first of all, we're a small community with existing collaborations. The partnership between Jefferson Healthcare and Jefferson County Public Health is incredibly strong and this process made it stronger. And there's a lot of groups in the community that work together. Discovery Behavioral Health, uh, the city, the county, everyone is at the table and so it's a huge opportunity to keep those relationships moving forward. We also now have an understanding of what needs to be done and the passion and drive to do it. That being said, some of the barriers are continuing that enthusiasm. It was a three-year process. By May and June, people were starting to get fatigued by coming to all these meetings. And so maintaining that over the long term is something that's going to be difficult. And also funding and infrastructure is currently lacking. And so I think we need to really think about how, what is the architecture that is needed to get everything done. In the packets, you'll see that there is a term lead agency in the right hand side of those annexes. And I just wanted to define what lead agency meant. There's one agency for strategy that's responsible for the overall organization and the coordinating different people and advocating for a specific strategy. It does not mean that that agency is going to be doing necessarily <coughs> all of the work. Although the agencies that have signed up, which is Public Health, Jefferson Healthcare, Discovery Behavioral Healthcare, O3A, and to the schools to some extent, they are already doing this work already. And so it falls within their mission and their vision. But that does not mean that individual agency is responsible for everything. So I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. The communication plan moving forward, this was developed for us by a trust student, a uh, UW Med student in the trust program, Emma Robson, who was here over the summer. And she gave us this really beautiful report on how to engage the community moving forward. There was the final report. We're working on a brochure or a paper insert, we're not really sure, that's very clear for the community. Press releases, public meetings, and local media. And so we're really working hard and we started planning months ago to make sure that this was actually going to get out there and it wasn't just going to be more of an internal document, but that it's really visible to everyone who put in all the work and the broader community. And our wins so far, most of our wins have been in the immunization realm. Um, immunization group was very focused, they were very enthusiastic. They finished their strategic framework much earlier than the other groups and they started doing implementation before it had any, moved any, forward, any way forward. And so, for instance, one of the strategies was to ensure that all hospital administered immunizations are uploaded from EPIC, which is the EHR, into the Washington State Immunization Information System. The lead agency was Jefferson Healthcare for that, and it's actually also on the bottom here as well. And that's already been done. There's already been work at Jefferson Healthcare to make sure that those immunizations are uploaded into what we call WIS. Outreach to school and parents regarding kindergarten immunization requirements. Jefferson County Public Health worked very hard. They did. Was it just one day out in Brennan where they were immunizing, immunizing kids there on site to make sure that everyone is getting their appropriate immunizations? But so this is already happening and there are already wins, which means that we should always celebrate. Celebrate the small things. And next steps are, I, we have already noticed mistakes in this draft document that went out and so making edits as needed, getting feedback from everyone here to really understand what are we missing, and then request board approvals. We're gonna present the plan to the original stakeholder group. We have expanded that group, and we have, there are people that have left their agencies from the original 85, and so we're making sure that their replacements are there. We've also been asking if anyone sees groups, sectors that are missing, to make sure that we have broad representation. We're gonna present the plan to the community in a series of community meetings that are gonna be scheduled the end of October, probably now into November, given the time frame. It'll be open meetings so we can talk to members of the community and then begin implementation, I guess, I mean, continue implementation because this is already happening. And I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Tom Locke. Well, thanks. Well, I've, I've been uh, asked to 
do sort of the wrap up and address the question of where do we go from here? And as Judy has, has just uh, in, in her final slide uh, has outlined, we, we have several concrete steps. Uh, one of the most important is what we're doing right here today, and that is seeking the support of our respective policy and governance boards. So the Board of Commissioners for the Public Hospital District, the Board of Health uh, for the, the local health jurisdiction. You know, the, these are the boards that are officially empowered with, with the authority to uh, adopt this plan on behalf of the community. Uh, but, but that's just the start, uh, because for a community health improvement plan, to be successful, you have to do several other things. Uh, uh, first and foremost, you have to grow the partnership. Uh, uh, you know, even though we, we, we've looked very specifically and realistically at all these objectives, uh, it's not something that we're going to be able to do just with the resources of the health department, uh, with, with the hospital district, or you know, uh, uh, certain additional volunteers. Uh, really successful community health partnerships, they, they expand. Uh, they, they set achievable goals, they attain those goals, and uh, in, in achieving the goals, they empower themselves to do more and more ambitious uh, things. And, and that leads to what is really the ultimate goal of all of this. And, and it's this very uh, uh, broadly supported, but, but very often not accomplished goal of actually improving community health. You know, if you look at all the health reform efforts that are going on in this country, in this state, uh, they all acknowledge that the ultimate scorecard for their efforts is improvement of population health. Uh, it doesn't, uh, you know, providing more medical services, providing more technology, doesn't get us very far uh, if it's not actually making people healthier. And right now, as I think we all know, that's not what's happening in our country, in our community. Uh, we, we've got, uh, our, our health status is actually declining. We have several unprecedented epidemics. We have an epidemic of type 2 diabetes. Uh, we have a virtual epidemic of obesity and sedentary lifestyle. Uh, we have an addiction or an opiate use uh, epidemic. And these are all getting worse. And these are not the kind of things you can really solve with more medical care or more substance abuse treatment. Uh, you, you need to take a much more comprehensive approach. You have to really not look just at, at treating the, uh, the victims of the disease. You have to look at the determinants of it. And so that, that, that's what this project, is, its ultimate ambition is to get at what, what are the things that really influence population health? Uh, where are our leverage points? What can we, we do to positively affect it? Uh, and then mobilize the kind of partnerships and coalitions necessary to accomplish that. Uh, what you see in this report is the, the best effort of this very impressive group of community members as related to these four objective areas. And we think the, all of these things are accomplishable and we will be better off as a community uh, for having accomplished it. Uh, but it's really just the starting point and, and it's a way of building this population and building belief in this, this concept of, of improving population health. Uh, and, and if we succeed at that, uh, then this will become a permanent process. And, and the, the community will enormously benefit from it year after year after year as more and more goals get added to this, this list of priorities. Uh, so with that, uh, I, I'd like to open this to, to uh, uh, any questions from board members, uh, you know, with, uh, a lot of different people that have participated in this are here today and, and uh, uh, ready to try to answer those questions. And also then just discussion among your, uh, yourselves about specific aspects of the plan. Uh, hopefully everyone's had a chance to go through it at this time. And, and, uh, 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 and, and 
uh, the, the, re the accompanying resolution, and ultimately, although we're, we're on no timeline to necessarily to accomplish this today, but moving the process forward towards uh, eventual approval and adoption. So with that, uh, open to discussion and uh, questions. Order. Yes, could I hear a little bit more about the plans in terms of having additional community input? I know there's an opportunity for public comment here. I'm just wondering, is there any plan to take a road show down to Quilty and, uh, you know, their community center and just get some input from folks who haven't been able to come up here? I think I can take that if you'd like, Kate. Mm -hmm. So we are, we are scheduling four community presentations, one in Port Townsend, one in Quilstein, one in Port Ludlow, and one in the Tri, tri area to be able to get out of the community so people can have an opportunity to comment on the plan. So we're, we're hoping to do that after there's board approval from these boards, that it's a semi-final plan before we do that. So the timing of those will be based on how soon you, you guys take action. But we're looking to do those uh, late in October or early in November. Great, thank you. Questions from the board? Is, is this a time for clarifying questions or um, is this also a time for comment and discussion? I'm not quite sure what the format is. And um, so if you could explain how you see going forward with this. David, that's great. Okay, well, I think it is a time to clarify the questions. We have so many people that have worked on this, uh, mm -hmm. and that will help inform uh, our decision to uh, adopt this plan at the future meetings that we will help with uh, the uh, uh, It is a plan, so I think it is one that can evolve as time goes on. It's changed. Uh, mm -hmm. It's good to have some point in time that here we are, here we're going, and we'll adjust later on based on the information. That might come next week or soon after, but uh, there comes a point in all these public processes where you have to say, okay, good enough, let's go. So I think we're heading for that spot. So whatever helps us get there. Yeah. Um, so, I think we should give everyone a round of applause. This is amazing work, you know. I mean, this was. No. <laughs> um, very exciting stuff, um, and I'm just looking at it uh, from a, you know, from the board level perspective, from both boards. The the key, I think, as you know, Tom was saying, is how do we make this a permanent process that is just ongoing? And to me, I'm just thinking, what is, at, at the board level, what's going to be our monitoring uh, process? Like, and um, <coughs> when are we going to do this again? Um, get together and see. I mean, that's going to be, there's a lot of amazing strategies here. Um, but I think one of the, Things that really helps process like this is really clear, strong leadership from the top, um, and this is, you know, this is the top coming together. Um, so I, I hope, uh, I hope we, I mean, I, I'd be interested in what our ideas are. How often do we think like a joint board meeting once a year, and um, might be the way? I mean, if, if that's the case, I'd, I'd be worried. Come back in a year, and just a lot of stuff is. Dropped, that might be too long. So, um, so I'm sort of curious what we think, you know, what kind of monitoring process will both boards receive and how will we check in with each other um, and provide support and ideas to try to, to make this as successful as possible. Um, well, I'm thinking maybe we could have reports uh, periodically and, and then meet at the dual board, you know, collaborative, um, at a given time, like every year, uh, if that suits both boards. But I envision this as an ongoing process. It's going to morph as we go along and things, we pick up more things. And as Tom alluded to, you know, one thing feeds on, it kind of feeds on itself and we see more and more opportunity. 
So I, I envision that we would have a permanent um, relationship. And I perhaps hear behind Matt's comments as to um, who are we going to designate, how are we going to fund the ongoing um, data collection, data reporting, and, and the monitoring, which I think Junya brought up in that one slide that says, we've already been doing this for three years, there was an immense amount of, I don't want to say diversion, but utilization of staff and people throughout the county, and that part of the plan, I think we need to, that's the next part that we have to talk about. This is this great product, who's going to carry it, and again, monitor the implementation, and are there grants, how is that going to be funded? And so, I'd like to add to that <coughs> infrastructure, some uh, infrastructure to support those people who are working on it to, <coughs> So, um, in my experience, uh, at when I was an employee reporting to, you know, uh, superiors, I mean, the people at the top, they really set the pace. I mean, it's, it's what we say, if we say we want a, a report in a quarter, in three months, showing, just tell us what's been done in the last three months, that will pressure, and, you know, that directs people to put some effort into it and work on it and focus on it. I mean, it's... I mean, it starts right here. It's, it's, I mean, we're, we're all, all elected, right? All, all put here to try to, like, you know, um, give some guidance. The, the, the one thing that really has jumped out on that board was there might be, um, might be too much <laughs> in this uh, plan. And the problem with having so many priorities is that it just disperses the energy and then uh, sometimes nothing uh, gets done and so and we can really help out here if we try to help focus the energies and say um, either either say uh, maybe these are of these 95 different strategies you know maybe like focus on some of these but at a minimum I think I think let's say uh, let's say when we're getting back together and let's say when we expect to hear a report because that will help keep the pace going of the work. Yeah, I, I agree. I think the timeline is dead set, not just waiting for critical things to happen, because otherwise it does get lost in that. So in the plan, and Dunya did mention this in the presentation, that there's a lead agency attached to each strategy. Uh, some strategies do not have a lead agency. So, um, but I'm I'm wondering, so the lead agencies hopefully know the strategies that they called for or that someone signed up for them to do. Um, but what is the what is the path of communication? This is a different path that's critical, I think, from the lead agency um, going about the strategy. Who's going to be holding the strings? Is it John? Is it Tom? Is it Vicki? Is it doing it? Who's holding the strings? of what is actually happening in the strategy world that's building toward the objectives and then the goals and um, getting the measurement and the report that we would be getting back. That's what I would like to know. Do you know that? Is, is there a minimum? Is it time for, a, uh, for us to hire someone to fill that very role? That's something that we might look at. 
I think we have to figure out the funding, but I think it is essential that there is some one entity, one person, one person responsible to get everything either together or to just dissipate the time. I think Joe did have a good idea that everybody took time away from their day jobs to do this. And once this paper is created, then people are going to have to go back and do what they do at the hospital and help farm all other places and try to find a minute here and that they do this. I've been seen looking at some form of some kind of agency that would be responsible for this. I know there's a funding issue, you know, there's grant funding, whatever, but I think somebody who's solely focused on this that doesn't have so many other things in their place to just fall off of the shadows. Okay. Yes, I, I would totally agree with uh, with Tony's thoughts there. Um, I mean, we do have people from the county, uh, from the hospital district, uh, from the city, um, and perhaps we could pool our resources and say if we're going to share an individual um, to really lead this process because um, I, I think that's important. And I think one of the reasons, I mean, this was a long process, and I think one of the reasons for that was that it was being led by people who had, you know, <laughs> more than 40 hour a week jobs already, um, just doing what they normally do. And uh, so I think getting a professional person to help uh, guide this process uh, would be ideal. I think the, the professional person can put the energy into it that I think is, uh, I mean, this community is incredible when it comes to volunteers. There's one given about volunteers, though. They burn out, they, they get tired. And um, if you pick somebody who's full of energy and can really get behind the project, put some energy and time into it, I think things will really flourish. Maybe, maybe a retiring county commissioner or somebody. <laughs> I don't know who that is. I do see this more than a volunteer position, though. Yeah. There has been so much time and expertise already put into this. It needs it needs that same quality to hold the strings and carry it forward. And um, this may be another opportunity for collaboration. How does this overlay or match up with uh, our, our oldest community of health that's going on? Vicki, can you speak to that? Because it feels like there might be, um, at some point, a crossing of paths. Yes, thank you. And that's, that's a really good point in that there is also in the formative stages as part of the Healthier Washington Initiative and health reform uh, that's going on currently, Regional Accountable Communities of Health. And ours is called the Olympic Community of Health, which is a region of Kitsap, Jefferson, and Qualley counties. And one of their mandates under the um, a Healthier Washington Initiative is a regional health improvement plan. So, and a regional health assessment so the, ex the extent to which our individual county assessments and priorities fit with the regional assessment and priorities, we have the opportunity or the pos possible opportunity of not only some assistance, but also some funding uh, that could come to each of the three counties um, the Olympic Community of Health is still in that sort of formative phase. So, the, um, but, but we have already begun the conversation around are there ways to um, uh, regionalize uh, our data collection and assessment uh, for those, those priorities that are common across the, the three counties. And fortunately, Siri is, in fact, the epidemiologist 
who has a portion of her time dedicated to the Olympic community of health. And she's very familiar with the data in uh, our counties. And, uh, it, and she's the one that is, it has begun those conversations with us around how might we be able to do this, do this together. Um, I think that there will be some opportunities, exactly what those look like, I don't think we know yet. Uh, there will be some funding as a result of the 1150, the global waiver that the state of Washington is currently negotiating with the federal uh, centers for Medicare and Medicaid um, that should bring some funding and the ACH is looking at things like some of those social determinants of health issues that uh, uh, so I think there's some opportunity in the future. It's also likely that we will have some Jefferson County specific uh, strategies and priorities that will remain uh, specific to us based on our, our particular communities. And we'll want to or still need to be able to collect the data and monitor that and um, uh, report on those things, but to the extent that we can get support from the Olympic Community of Health for what it is that we are doing here. Um, that is a hope of the future, and um, I think that uh, that's also the thinking of the Executive Director of the Olympic Community of Health as well, that um, we are sort of, we are all in this together. What can we do get around mutual support? So opportunity in the future, exactly what that looks like, I, I, I don't think we can say yet. But. Can I just add a quick thing to that? And then the, the, I think the issue there could be timing, that the counties are on a little bit different cycle with that, and so how we all get synced up in terms of when we're gonna do that assessment could be an issue, and we may need to provide an interim assessment if it's gonna be a long time before. Just something for you guys to be aware of, that that could be an issue. Wondering when, when there might be some uh, notion whether we've got to have a global waiver and, uh, and when that funding would be coming in. The, well, the original hope was that they would have negotiations completed by the end of October, and I think they're still hoping that that, that will be the case. And then I think there will be a period of time as they analyze and assess what that money might look like what those strings are, how they roll it out, and talk about it with the affected the healthcare and uh, public health communities, um, I would say we wouldn't necessarily be looking at actual dollars in hand until sometime next year. Exactly when it just depends on how quickly how quickly it goes and how many strings are attached to the dollars that come ultimately. But you know we're. What we hear is we're talking about a, a you know a substantial amount of money that would be spread across the entire state. <coughs> How that would be allocated to the individual accountable communities of health and what that, that allocation might look like, I'm not really sure. If it's you know will it will it be on a peer per capita basis? Will it be project by project oriented? So specific funding we make application for projects. That's how it's gone so far with the early uh, pilot projects has been uh, the ACH has uh, put a proposal together uh, for the healthcare authority and then they negotiate what that budget's going to be for that. And, and that may be how it continues in the future, uh, which actually, and this is just my own personal opinion, could be better for us in the long run than a strict capital allocation, which tends to uh, hurt the smaller counties. That, that's it exactly. And, you know, I would anticipate the next phase is going to be a, a specific funding to groups that are ready to, to do something. Because the, the, the state's under incredible pressure to show results. And it, as you think, it's taken us three years to get to this point of, of really identifying the specific things we can do in this community and how we can measure success. And so building this kind of effort and, and sustaining it and expanding it, uh, I, I think it's a very wise investment.
because this, this is at the very heart of what health reform's uh, trying to do. And the Medicaid waiver, it's very hard, is, is acknowledging the fact the way we spend Medicaid money right now does not bias the health that we should be getting. We're not getting the bang for the buck. Uh, it, it, it's the federal government giving the state of Washington permission to spend the money differently. But that only raises the question, well, well how would you actually do that? Uh, and that, that's what we're trying to answer in the plan on this. Yeah, exactly. If I may, from experience, we try to establish an ongoing crowd program of caution and based out on external funding, it's not a viable situation. Short-term project has long-term now. As far as volunteers go, volunteers have good support system, but if you mentioned a burnout, Plus, my experience is that a volunteer doesn't seem to have quite as loud a voice as a person who's on the payroll when it comes to the table. I think part of the challenge for you as policymakers and board members is uh, re is, is um, recognizing, I think, as Dr. Locke said, um, that what we're talking about in this is a, is a substantial change in the way we do business, the, the collective way, both the healthcare industry, who really is facing a lot of pressure because not only is it the population health side of things where they have expectations for the healthcare system, but it's also on implementing this notion of value-based payment. What does that really look like for a provider and how does that get implemented? But it's also a systemic recognition in the public health arena as well, and this is happening nationally around the role of public health in the community uh, around uh, assuring that we are making strides and doing things that will actually improve the public's health. So part of our what are called foundational capabilities are things like data assessment uh, and uh, creating the um, uh, policies and uh, changes, sort of the policy, systemic change, environmental changes that in, improve the public's health. So it, this, this notion of assessment uh, and policy development and moving this, which this chip represents, is a fundamental responsibility, as Judy indicated, of the public health system nationwide. Uh, but that's different and distinct from public health is responsible for doing everything that's in, included in that, because that's, it, again, it takes the multiple sectors, as we all know, uh, doing things to in, in, improve the health. I wonder if it'd be appropriate for us to um, jointly ask um, Mike Glenn, David Timmons, who I see is here in the room, thank you, David, um, Philip Morley, and Vicki Kirkpatrick, to come up with a proposal for how all of the relevant entities, governmental entities here in the county can work together to fund um, a position of a professional to help direct this project and ask them to report back to us within a month. I mean, I'm just making that up. Does it seem to be an iterative process, you know, with uh, outside entities, the state, and others? Uh, we have a chance to influence, to advocate for what we want, not just wait and be told what to do. Uh, so it does seem like a time we really do it. It's also budget time for everybody, so in terms of planning next year's budget, we are all in a position of figuring out what our priorities are and uh, how we do that. So it seems like a timely By, by the way, did I make my statement in the form of a motion? Absolutely. I think I did. Okay. Well, now I did. I so moved. We moved and seconded.
um, what's our expectation? You know, I mean, it's, it's really it's about pace. How much, how much uh, leverage we want on the gas pedal on this? I mean, three years is a long time. Um, that this and the re uh, part of the reason I think it took so long was like we were extracting work out of uh, you know out of a very stretched um, system already. So uh, what do we? What is a good pace? Because uh, I know none of us want to see this just drop. See all these, all this effort drop. So what is, what would be, what do we want? How often do we want to get uh, get information back to us? I think that really says it. You know, if, if, um, that seems like maybe a separate separate motion um, because the motion that that 